Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch again. I apologize, I'm spamming you guys a bit today because stuff just keeps happening. This is always how it works. Basically, you have the Christmas shutdown and nothing happens. And then people get back to work after the Christmas shutdown and everything happens. That's why we had a new release of Panda. We had a new release or the, uh, the new announcement from GitHub. And today we have Godot 3.1 Beta was just announced. So uh, sorry that you're getting this many videos today. I try to space it out to one to at most two per day, but when news just keeps happening, I try to be as timely as possible in my reporting so that you guys are, you know, as aware of things as can be. Let me know in the comments down below how you'd like me to, to do this, actually. Would you have rather I just push this video off into tomorrow and been a little bit behind on it just to spread things out more, or would you rather have, you know, as news breaks, videos come out? Let me know. Uh, but anyways, sorry about the spam, and let's get back to the topic at hand, and that's a Godot 3.1 beta. Now, Godot has been, 3.1 has been in development for a while now. It's had five alpha releases, I believe, and there's a major difference between alpha releases and beta release. And there's a reason why I don't really cover alpha releases, but I do cover beta releases. And that is because alpha releases change. They are breaking, there's new features, new functionalities, experiments, everything like that goes into an alpha release. When it comes to a beta release, that's when the change stops. So here we are on the Godot blog. Of course, we'll link this down below as always. Um, you see here, this line right here, this means Feature work is finished for this version. From now on, we are in release freeze, so that means no new features will be added. At this point in time, it is all bug fixes and polish. So what you see now in the 3.1 beta is what we expect to see in 3.1. Theoretically, 3.1 should be the end of the month kind of thing, but this is a pretty big release, so there's a lot going on. Now again, I'm gonna read their disclaimer out loud and then I'm gonna you know, go against it a little bit. As always, you should never use a beta version in production, period. Just don't do it, uh, and especially not in alpha. Alphas are way too unstable, but betas really shouldn't be used in production either. Also expect that you know your project files could break between versions, so committing to go up to the next version does have some ramifications. So don't use this in production in theory. In reality, I've been using the 3.1 alpha, in fact, for the last um, two or three months, and it's been flawless. So uh, you, again, don't use this, but if you do, eh, it's pretty good to be honest. So what is in this guy? Well, um, there's no release notes yet, but there is fortunately this detailed change log made by Hugo here. I'm not gonna even try your last name. Lo ah, yeah, Locurcio, Lo Locurcio? I don't know, sorry Hugo, mangled your name. But thank you for maintaining the change log. And that's what we're gonna look at in a second to highlight the new features that are in this release. Now, another thing to keep in mind with this particular release, these are not available from the download link. No, you can only get it from this page itself. So you go ahead and pick the build you want here, either the classical build, which is basically GD script only, or the mono build. The mono build is with C-sharp support. Now do keep in mind, you need to use mono. And mono is the only way to get MS build. X build is no longer supported, so uh, you need to have mono installed for to use the uh, mono build versions, which I guess makes sense. Also notice here, uh, 3.1 project will break your file when you go forward, so do be aware of that. If you've run into any bugs, file them up here. But when you go ahead, pick the version you want to download, and I'm gonna show you something with this download that's kind of important. So I'm gonna run it quickly. Nothing too special here, but what we're gonna do, uh, pick the version you got. So in my case, I'm gonna do um, Godot 3.164, and we'll just download that. Generally, their servers are pretty quick, so let's just wait for that to download. There we go. So open it up. It is a standard zip with an executable inside of it. Open up that executable. And this is something I wanna point out to people right away. There's always this warning. You're gonna get that from your browser. And then there's often another one. Okay, and I'm not getting it in this particular case. There was um, a smart screen warning you'll get a lot of times from Windows itself. And ironically named smart screen because it is really, really stupid. But basically it boils down to if the executable you have downloaded has not been run a certain number of times, it gets flagged as dangerous. So just ignore that warning. It's gonna be a side effect of almost any fresh build open source project. It's just one of those annoyances when dealing with Windows. So now I'm gonna go ahead, open up one of these things. Hopefully this project works so I don't have to create a new one or do anything like that. Now the other key thing to know about Godot 3.1, functionally it is is very, very, very similar to the previous versions. But notice up here, you have this option here. And this is one of the major factors of the 3.1 release is now G, uh, OpenGL ES2 support is back. So if you're running on a older hardware, especially in the mobile space, or you've got like an Intel integrated graphics card from four or five years ago, you're gonna wanna target ES2. Now that was the targeted version back in Godot 2, but it was removed in three. And now they've backported the renderer. So GLES2 is a valid target 
for older versions. So if you want to toggle between them, you can do so, but you will have to restart as a result. Now I'm going to exit out. That is how you can switch between the two different renderer versions. Now let's look at what else is new in the 3.1 release. And we're looking again, top level change logs. I'm going to do a quick scan of some of the highlight features here, especially the ones that I've really been waiting for. So we just mentioned right there, there is now again, an OpenGL ES2 renderer in place. Uh, the visual shader editor got some new love with a new PBR output nodes conversion between vector three and scalar types is now automatic ability to create custom nodes via script and ports can now be previewed. By the way, if you've never used the visual shader editor, I have done a video on that subject. It was basically in Godot two removed and then added back in Godot three. It is a way of visually creating shaders using a graph node of, um, graph. Like it's a, a, you basically connect pins together to create shaders visually. It's, it's a nice way to go, especially if you do not like shader programming yourself. We have 3D soft body physics, 3D ragdoll system, constructive or CSG geometry in 3D. Also done a video on that, by the way, if you want to Google that. Um, 2D mesh and skeletal deformation. Uh, so if you're working on uh, like a spine or a spriter type animation system, you can now actually deform the mesh directly in 2D mesh over time in animation. Kinematic body 2D improvements. And this actually, it, it kind of needed it. It was one of those things that was a little sketch in the earlier version. So support for snapping the body to the floor. That was one area where it was really glitchy before. Raycast shape in kinematic bodies to support for synchronizing kinematic movement to physics, avoiding one frame delay. Um, so you can actually, uh, we won't get into that. Uh, uh, WebSocket support using lib WebSockets, uh, revamped inspector, improved animation editor. Uh, they, the Bezier controls are actually a lot nicer now in the new way. Uh, improved animation tree and new state machine. I've also done a video on that. I've actually done a video on a lot of these new things that are coming out, which are pretty nice. Uh, simplex noise and noise texture resource were added. Uh, and I like this one. Optional static typing has come to GDScript. Now note that that is 100% optional. But what you find with uh, dynamic languages like GDScript is sometimes you can um, assign a value to a variable that creates a bug condition because the variable basically infers its value from what it is inside. And this can relate, this can lead to some bugs or problems. What you do in a typed language is basically this is like saying this here is an int. So when I try to apply a string to my int, it throws an error. Right now it won't. It will just turn your um, int into a string instead, and then you may have a bug later on down the road. So what you can do now is optionally static type. And um, I'll do a video on this at some point in the future because it's something that requires more detail. But if you do click here, I think there is an article. Yeah, there's a full article on how static typing works. So you see here, uh, it's using kind of like the hacks syntax where you're, you, you give it a type to the right hand side. So you're saying here in this particular case that this is a floating point value. And it gives you that one more layer of sanity that your variables are behaving as your variables are um, as you express them. Now the very cool thing with static typing in G GDScript is it is 100% optional. So if you want to stick with the way things were, just ignore the fact that this now exists. But if you want to add that extra layer of typing, it is in Godot 3.0 one, which is pretty cool. Uh, warning system improvements, GDScript keyword class name to add it was to register scripts as classes. Um, and then we're kind of getting into the more smaller tweak type changes. But as you can see, Godot got some pretty nice changes in it. Um, you also have some changes to the underlying library itself. Most of these are pretty minor or implementation type, uh, implement, implementation details that probably won't matter to you that much. Another thing here is support for 32-bit and fat Mac OS binaries is gone, but uh, I think Mac removed 32-bit support like three years ago. So uh, that one really shouldn't cause anyone any problems. The other thing to be aware of is that uh, you can still do 32-bit builds on Linux and uh, Windows. So don't worry, that's, they, they should have wrote this as uh, for 32-bit Mac OS and fat Mac OS binaries, or the, the wording is a little ambiguous there. They just removed 32-bit support for Mac, and Mac removed 32-bit support, again, years ago. So it's really a non-issue. Um, see a little bit more of the changes that they've done going on. Uh, nice thing is here, high DPI is now uh, detected and used if needed in the project manager. So right when you first launch your thing, you're not looking at really, really, really tiny text on your 4K monitor. It's a nice release overall. And this basically is, these are the features and functionality that you will see in Godot 3.1. Now it's just a matter of making them work better to improve it, to polish it, and to, to just make this a more finalized product. And hopefully we will see that in about a month's time. So you got those marquee features out there, like your new um, the GLES2 renderer being back, uh, the typing, uh, the 3D physics improvements that you've seen here, CSG or constructive solid geometry support. Uh, there's some really cool things that made it into 3.1. Uh, 
And I do recommend once it is ready, definitely you're gonna to wanna to upgrade to 3.1 from three. It's pretty much an improvement across the board. Okay, so that is it. That is the news of the day. And if any more news happens to hell with it, unless it's like Unity is now completely open source, it can wait till tomorrow. So no more videos from me, unless the world of game development is going to be massively changed by the announcement. Otherwise, I will wait for tomorrow. And once again, my apologies for the overload of videos today. Again, weigh in down below. Would you have rather I waited for tomorrow to publish this video or would you rather just be as timely as possible? Weigh in, let me know, and I will take your advice into uh, consideration as things go forward. Generally, we don't normally have multiple news events in a day like this. It is a post-holiday ramification. So uh, let me know what you think. Godot 3.1, looking pretty good. What feature are you most excited about, or do you just not give a damn? Let me know, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.